if we maintain this current lifestyle and it doesn't change anything, uh, our mindset or even a lifestyle changes, that Malaysia may have 7 million of diabetes in 2025, which is about five years later on. That time in Malaysia will be a total population of three, I would say 30 million. So maybe uh, one third of our population will be suffering from diabetes. If in your neighborhood, you look at your left, if no one is suffering from diabetes, maybe you look at your right. If no one is suffering from diabetes, maybe yourself is a person who is suffering from diabetes. So overall, in the world, worldwide, there will be 425 million of population that are actually currently suffering from this diabetes. So in about 2045, which means is uh, 25 years later, the figure will be double up, so about 625 million. All right. The risk of the mortality is 50% higher than the healthy people. So, which means that if today, myself and a person who are suffering from diabetes, we both get this, say, now the trend will be, say, COVID-19, all right? COVID-19, me and this diabetes person will have this COVID-19, and his chance is going to death or mortality is higher than me, about 50%. So, which means that if you are suffering from uh, diabetes, the chances that you are getting die from other disease or diabetes itself is 50% much more greater than those who are healthy. So half of Malaysians actually do know that they even they are having diabetes even now. Because this maybe is due to because Malaysian awareness is still remain very low. Our mindset, our mindset will be very skeptical, thinking that only the old person or people who are over a certain age only were suffering from the diabetes. For example, we will think that about, oh, uh, I'm still young, I'm about 20 to uh, 30 years old, my range is now is uh, around 20 to 30, so probably I'm not suffering from this diabetes, so why should I go for this blood check? But do you know that in Malaysia, actually the figure is far more severe than you actually think. So let's guess the statistic of diabetes in Malaysia. So what do you think the number of people who are actually suffering from diabetes in Malaysia? Can you guys give me a figure, like a round figure, you can give me a guess. I can give you a hint. Now Malaysia is about 30, 32 million of population in total. So what do you think is the figure of diabetes actually suffering amongst our population? I would probably say about 50%. 50%. Wow, that's a very... A huge number, ah. okay? Yeah, okay. Anyone else? I will give you about five, four, three, two, one. So let's say, hold on. Ah. All right, it's about 3.6 million. So, um, if 3.6 million considered in Malaysia, actually it's still considered very severe because in about 5%, one is actually suffering from this diabetes. So the diabetes complication can affect you from your head to your toe. So from head, we will uh, actually suffering from this cerebral uh, accident, also called stroke, if you are suffering from this diabetes. And then we come to our eyes. If you are suffering from diabetes, you will probably know that we are calling this uh, problem called uh, diabetic retinopathy or the damage we're causing this glaucoma. Okay, glaucoma is a disease that causing your eye vision become very limited. Okay, eventually we'll get blind. And then come to our heart, it will be a coronary heart disease or so-called uh, heart attack. Okay, heart attack, 50% uh, increased risk compared to those who are healthier. Okay, then come to our kidney, our lower part of body, which is kidney failure. So if you know about a person who are suffering from long-term diabetes, he or she actually might damage her kidney eventually. And then until a certain stage, they might also need to go for the dialysis. Okay, and then come to the peripheral artery disease. You will know that uh, diabetic patient, they're actually suffering from the poor blood circulation. So we notice that their wound healing is very slow compared to normal person. So they're also suffering from the diabetic foot. Diabetic foot, I think most people will understand that if I don't take care of diabetes, my skin or my wound is unable to heal properly. And then eventually, if I'm not taking good, maybe I will need to go for an amputation. It means chop off your hand or chop off your leg to prevent the, the, uh, the bacteria or the virus like keep on spreading to your other part of the body. So in Malaysia, this is based on the Malaysian Heart 
uh, .org. So they say that the number of diabetics in each complication in heart, in every true diabetics per person, one will actually suffering from this heart disease. And then amongst five of these diabetes person, three will suffering from this kidney disease. And then three of them will actually suffering from this amputation, means that you need to chop off your hand. And two of them will suffering from these stroke cases. All right. So if one that, like for example, you never go for a blood screening or you never go for a blood testing before. So what are the some common diabetes symptoms that you should know? One is unintentional weight loss. We all know that we all wish to have a weight loss, but that one is intentional, that you are go for a diet, you go for a, a supplement, you go for a meal replacement, or you go for a portion controlling, or you control a lifestyle. That one is intentional weight loss, means that you know the reason why your weight is getting lower, lower, and lower. But unintentional weight loss, which means that you don't know what's going on, but your weight loss is just suddenly drops significantly just like that. So this is, could be very severe. Either it could be a symptom of diabetes. The second one could be other severe disease like cancer. So if you're suffering from an unintentional weight loss, you should probably go for a check for yourself. Second, blur vision. Because diabetes will affect our uh, blood circulation, so that the second thing that a diabetes person is suffering from is a blur vision. Like from time to time, they will see things from a very clear eyesight and then until a very blur vision. Of course, this should be excluded for those who are having this long sinus or short sinus. So if you are having a long sinus or short sinus, maybe, probably you should go for a eye test first. If your eye test remain the same, but you still claim that it's very blurred, it could be a time for you to check for your blood. All right, frequent urination. Frequent urination could be many factors that are causing a frequent urination. All right, uh, you are drinking too much of water, you're eating too much of uh, these uh, diuretics. Uh, supplements like making your uh, urine keep on uh, urination. Uh, otherwise, you are having a very stressed moment. If you are very stressed, your brain will stimulate a hormone that keep you go on toilet. All right. So if a person who go to a, a night at night go for, for frequent urination, we all, always claim that if you go for more than two times at night that you go for a toilet, we also known as the frequent urination. Okay, slow healing. So healing, we always know that it can link to diabetes as well as other diseases. But diabetes patient is actually a more obvious or more uh, significant in terms of this uh, slow healing that they, he or she might suffering from this so slow healing is because of their blood unable to carry the nutrients to the cell. So the cell eventually will die and then they're unable to do the healing process. And then increase thirst. Of course, this one is excluded those that uh, stay in the environment or situation which is very hot or you are eating some salty food. So that this may be some uh, external or so-called uh, reason that should be excluded. If you are having, you are under places which is very hot and then you go for drinking a lot of water, that's normal. But you are under air con, very comfort zone and yet it's still need to go for a, a water dispenser and then keep on drinking water, it could be you having this problem with your blood sugar. Last one will be the excessive fatigue. Excessive fatigue uh, by is, is not that you are lack of sleep or it is not that you are very tired, that you are working so hard yesterday. It means that you have sufficient of sleeping. You have uh, nothing to do with any uh, external or any drugs or medication that drive you sleepiness. It's just that uh, every five minutes or 10 minutes after, you will keep yawning and then say that, oh, it's very tired. This could be the excessive fatigue, what I'm mentioning too. This could be one of the signs and symptoms of this diabetes problem. All right, now we talk about types of diabetes. There actually have about three common types of diabetes that exist in this world. So first of all, we must know that what is a diabetes. So diabetes is whereby the pancreas unable to secrete the normal insulin. All right. So you can see in a normal, in a normal person, the pancreas can secrete the normal insulin whereby the sufficient of number of insulin in order to do their work to break down the glucose so that they won't keep on circulating in your blood and then they will deliver the nutrients to your cell. So number one is type one diabetes. Type one diabetes where it's an inborn disease when they uh, is a very childhood times they already know that their insulin 
uh, their pancreas unable to produce any insulin. So they are really depends on the injection of this insulin. So this kid, this will already happen during the kids or childhood time. They will develop at the very, very early times. But it just occupies about less than 5% of the population who are actually having this diabetes. Most of us is actually suffering from this called type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, which mean by originally your pancreas is good, no problem, but your unhealthy lifestyle, your lacking of exercise, you doesn't take good care of your body, all right? Then your pancreas eventually unable to produce the correct amounts of insulin. For example, let's say for example, a normal, normal pancreas can produce say about six unit of insulin and yet a type 2 diabetes person only can produce about two insulin. So they are insufficient to work or their work is very inefficiency or they are resistant to insulin. Mean by your insulin is like transform already. They mutate and then they are able to do their work properly. So more and more they will start with like uh, doc, uh, maybe the healthcare provider will ask you to do some weight loss if you are obese. If unable to deal with this problem, maybe you will need to on some medication. If you are still not taking good care, then last, lastly, you need to go for this insulin injection. All right. And then the last one, last one is much more special, but I think who, those who are pregnant before, he, she might, might, might experience this before. This is so-called gestant, gestational diabetes, whereby this diabetes is developed during the pregnancy. All right. This um, diabetes will eventually went off after the woman deliver the baby. But if you don't take good care during your pregnancy, diabetes will come back to you and then chances is very high. If you didn't take good care even after you deliver, you can still suffering from diabetes. Okay, so what's the risk factor of diabetes that come to us or having this, uh, we are suffering from this diabetes? First of all, is family history, especially those are first degree relative, included our parents and siblings. But of course, parents will affect us more because they give birth to us and our gene is actually in inherited from them. So they will increase the risk up to 50%. So if you have family history, Plus, you doesn't take good care of your body, so chances of getting diabetes is super duper high compared to those who are taking good care of themselves, even though they have this family history. Second, gestational diabetes means that you're having this diabetes during your pregnancy, but you didn't take good care after you deliver the baby, then diabetes will come to you. All right. Third, is overweight or obese, which means that your BMI is more than 25. Where BMI is more than 25 means that you are actually obese already. So um, I think most of you, or I think some of you may ask how to calculate the BMI. So uh, BMI is calculating by using your weight in kg over your height in meter. So your height times your height, all right, in meter, and then use your weight to divide it. So after you're getting the result, you should see that if your range is within 18.5 to 24.9, means that your body mass index is good enough, is under the normal range. So if you are more than 25 and above, probably you are overweight or obese even worse. So maybe it's time that you're considering doing some weight loss program, but we are not encouraged that a very thin or slim, super duper slim person is considered normal. It could be underweight. If your body mass index is less than 18.5, means that your body is actually lacking of in, uh, nutrients and chances of getting this osteoporosis is very high if you are underweight. All right. So fourth is waist circumference. So I always suggest a man or a woman go measure their waist circumference from time to time. For men, if your waist is more than 36 inches or in cm is 90 cm, you are actually high chances of suffering from this um, so-called diabetes for women whereby it's more than 32 inches. Because in Asian, I'm not saying that Malaysian, Malaysian is actually uh, quite uh, considered an obese country, but for Asian, if you are not, your BMI is normal, but we do have this so-called alcohol tummy or beer stomach. So if you're having this beer stomach, but yet your weight is uh, within the normal BMI, still you have the risk of getting this diabetes because if you're having a big tummy, which means that the visceral fat is high in your body. Visceral fat is whereby the fat deposits outside your organ. 
your pancreas is organ, if pancreas is all uh, surrounded by this fatty acid or fatty layer, eventually will causing this uh, pancreas unable to do the function or do its work properly, and then eventually will having this diabetes. Okay, four, high triglyceride and low HDL cholesterol, which means that you have high blood lipid and yet your good cholesterol is very low. So chances that maybe you are suffering from this insulin resistance and then chances of getting diabetes also very high. Six, lacking of exercise. We all know that if you are doing exercise, many diseases will come to us eventually. Fourth is heart disease. You are, if you are suffering from heart disease, chances of getting other diseases also very high because of the blood circulation in you is not so good. And then in heart disease, problem or a patient who having this heart disease or uh, someone having this heart disease the uh, lipids and the glucose also is not so under control eight is hypertension hypertension is all known as this a uh, high blood pressure high blood pressure and this uh, diabetes is like brothers brotherhoods is like they are interrelated they are uh, affected among each other hypertension can cause diabetes diabetes also can cause hypertension so for hypertension, how does it cause diabetes? It's because of when we're having suffering from this high blood pressure, high blood pressure, our blood pressure is very high. So chances of damaging our uh, internal organ is also very high. You can imagine that if your body is always or long term under a pressure, where your blood pressure is very high, eventually it will damage the internal organ, not just your pancreas that causing you having this diabetes, also might affect your kidney that causing you having this kidney problem or kidney failure. Number nine, if you are doing a blood test for blood sugar on frequently and then uh, most of the time you will see a result is high blood sugar result in the test. So it might be a hint that you are having this problem of diabetes even though you doesn't aware or even though you doesn't have any sign or symptom that I mentioned earlier on, you still have a chances of getting this high uh, high blood sugar because of the result having proven that. So if I belong to the high risk group that I mentioned just now, please kindly check your blood sugar level as soon as possible. So included if you are overweight, lack of exercise, having a family history, you may be probably having this pre-diabetics. So means that you maybe don't know, but you already maybe at the borderline of this diabetic. So we call it pre-diabetic. You are not yet diabetes, but you are not considered normal as well. So in this category, we all known as pre-diabetics. So a blood test can let you know if you are having this problem or not. So commonly, we do have two types of this uh, uh, blood test. Either is through these fingerprints, means that very convenient. You just need uh, drops or blood from your finger, index finger, all right, it's very easy, very convenient, all right. Other than that, you can do a very details, a full checkup through uh, withdrawing blood from your vein, all right. So in the blood test, they got three uh, results, one and two is very similar. The first one is fasting plasma glucose, you also can know as fasting blood glucose. When we call it fasting blood glucose, I do mean that you need to fasting at least eight to ten hours. All right, so the number, if you are greater than seven, which means that you are having this diabetes because the normal range is 4.4 to 5.5. You, if you are 5.5 to about less than seven, that the result we call pre-diabetics, all right? The second one, we call random plasma glucose. What is called random plasma sugar and what's the difference between this random and fasting? Random plasma sugar whereby you didn't go for a fasting about eight to 10 hours, for example, Today, suddenly I have a mood, I want to go for my blood sugar test. But however, I already consumed my lunch, I've already consumed my lunch at 12 o'clock. So I need to wait about two hours, at least two hours to do this random plasma glucose check. So for random plasma glucose, it's always that uh, indicate that the blood glucose is tested by at only two hours of fasting. So you will see that the range is about 4.4 to 7.7, .7, which is the normal range. For the diagnosed as diabetes, it's greater than 11. So it's very easy to memorize. You can memorize uh, them as 7-11. So if you are fasting, it's 7. If random, is 11. So you are more than 7, 
treatment and 11, so you are actually being diagnosed as suffering from this diabetes. Last one, we call it uh, glycodex hemoglobin, or in short form, you call it HbA1c. When your HbA1c is more than 6.5%, you are actually diagnosed as diabetes. HbA1c, you cannot cheat because it reflects the average of blood sugar level over the past three months. For example, if today I knew that tomorrow I will go in for a blood check, normally once due to this psychologically, we will try to aware some bad food that we will eat on usual or try to control our portion, try to eat some clean meal or some uh, complex thing so that our blood result is looking good on tomorrow blood test. But for the HbA1c, you cannot hide because it reflects over the past three months. So the day you do before the blood test doesn't change anything. So if your blood, uh, fasting blood sugar is still under control, yet your HbA1c still is very high, we would still consider you are actually suffering from this diabetes. All right. After talking about the risk and the complication, let's talk about how to prevent and manage of diabetes. When I say prevent and management, we, I don't mean that if you are having this diabetes, you can do it this method, or even you want to prevent, you can still doing this method. So number one, first of the point is healthy diet. So healthy diet, you must doing the concept with three low and one high. Low in fat, salt, and sugar. So I probably think that most of us know that how to uh, prepare or choose a meal that is low in fat, sugar, and salt by cooking by ourselves, prepare ourselves. The thing that I want to emphasize today is high in fiber. So fiber in commons, in commons nowadays, we can classify into two types of fiber. There will be soluble fiber and also insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber is that the food that you eat into your intestine or your tummy, they will turn bulky, they will enlarge, and when they slow down the digestion. So they will help in lowering the fats, cholesterol absorption, as well as weight management, also stabilizing the blood sugar. So what are the common food? They are actually rich in this soluble fiber. In common food, you can eat some uh, oat brands, all right, oat brands, seed, seed where I mean that flax seed or char seed, nuts, nuts like walnuts or almond, lentils, uh, citrus fruit like uh, apples, all right, berries, all right, this is also called this soluble fiber. Now we come to the insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber whereby this thing doesn't turn bulky. So this thing is help us to prevent this constipation, help our bowel movement, all right. So insoluble fiber we can obtain from this whole grain bit, whole grain, uh, whole grain things like your uh, brown rice, your uh, whole grain rice, or even like some dark leafy veggie, dark leafy veggie, as well as some fruits together with the skin. Okay, the skin is actually high in fiber. Okay, so if you think that in your normal diet, it's very hard to find those food, feel no worry. In Exxon One, we do have a product that's very high in this fiber, high in this... Um, soluble fiber whereby it can help us stabilize our blood sugar, lower down our cholesterol, as well as good and effectiveness during this uh, weight management. All right, we so-called it uh, Saji Chinke. Okay, Saji Chinke have the highest dietary fiber contained amongst all the grains. All right, like I mentioned, the function of dietary fiber that is turned bulky, okay, uh, this chinker is actually considered insoluble fiber. So this fiber, when it go down to our tummy, it will turn bulky, and then we will slow down the food digestion, which will make us full, feel, feel this fullness, and then also satisfied, all right? So when a person feels full, the chances of getting that he or she wants to crave for food is also less, so that it primarily defend or prevent yourself from getting food, uh, especially those who want to go for weight loss. All right. Second thing is help in reduce the sharp spike in blood sugar level, which is good for this blood sugar controlling because it slows down the food digestion, which means that it absorbs very slow so that it won't causing a very sharp or very spike in our blood sugar. So it's good for diabetes patients who want to control their blood sugar profile. And then the third one, all right, feeding with uh, this high uh, dietary fiber is also, this dietary fiber is a food for our healthy gut bacteria, when this bacteria grow, 
that can increase our body immunity. Why immunity is very important in a diabetes case is because a diabetes case always suffering from this problem we call wound healing problem. So when you increase the body immunity, the chances of getting the infection is also lesser. Okay, in this Saji Chingga, it's actually a combination of this harness barley, all right, the sea bakton fruit, as well as 18 types of fruits and vegetables. So it is the greatest grain and then only cult cultivated at the area of, of about uh, 3,800 meters above the sea level. So why are these things so good and so-called highest uh, dietary fiber amongst all the green because that it has the highest beta gluten whereby I will discuss later with you all. It also contains about 18 types of amino acid as well as 8 of them is essential whereby our body cannot synthetize or produce by our own. And then also it consists of 81 types of essential nutrients. It's suitable for about 8 different types of life stage uh, included uh, your childhood stages, our adolescent, young adult, middle age, uh, pregnancy, even if you are like in the disease stages, like you are having already suffering from this uh, diabetes, you still can consume this product. 11 special ability with 8 benefits. All right, do you know that this Harlan's barley is actually has the highest beta glucan amongst all the grains? So why is this beta glucan? Ah? So, Beta glucan is a type of uh, component that can effectively reduce our cholesterol and stabilize the blood sugar level. So if you're keen to have a supplement or product to reduce your cholesterol and stabilize the blood sugar level, you must know that how much or do this product contain beta glucan. All right. Number two, dietary fiber can help bowel movement and body detox detoxification because if we can help our bowel movement, which means that the toxic can be removed daily so that there will be no any leftover of feces that will left inside your body that create a toxics to your blood. All right? Because uh, you must know that the only places or part of body that absorb uh, nutrients, all right, is our tummy. If your tummy is full of toxin, your tummy is actually, uh, or your intestine is doesn't um, absorb any nutrients, but only toxin. All right. The nutrients in chinkle such as uh, vitamins B1, B2, and B3 are actually good for human growth as well as this uh, development because the complex uh, vitamins, I, like I mentioned or share in my first class uh, about the benefits of C-Bacton in uh, human body towards human body. And I do mention that B complex actually helps in many uh, cell metabolism in our body. Also, can enhance the uh, mood if you feel very sad. Uh, vitamins B can enhance your mood, make you feel better. Also, can uh, improve the skin dryness. All right. Number four, the trace elements in the chinka can maintain the function of body system. We do need some trace elements like uh, zinc, zinc, okay, zinc as well as the uh, potassium, all right, like this kind of uh, trace element or zinc, selenium or iron. So in chinka, they can maintain the normal function of the uh, body system, all right, body system, for example, the blood circulation, uh, respiration, all right, as well as uh, metabolism, all right. Number five, it can reduce the risk of heart disease because it can effectively reduce the cholesterol and stabilize the blood sugar level. You must understand that heart disease doesn't come just like a blink of eye. It develops from time to time. It means that if you don't take good care of your three highs, including your hypertension, high cholesterol, as well as diabetes, eventually this problem will develop into heart disease. So if you can reduce the risk of further worsening of your three highs, and then you can reduce the risk of this heart disease. All right, okay. Lastly, is chinka can provide us with a sufficient of protein, iron, and calcium. So, um, protein, we all know that is very good for a wound healing, all right? Also, pro produce sufficient of amino acids for all the cells to uh, multiple, all right, multiple. We do need cells to multiple to grow some new cells. Iron is for the uh, blood, hemoglobin. So they won't suffering from these things called anemia, anemia, or for diabetic person, they need this iron so that they won't feel exhaust or tired easily. Calcium is whereby you need to supplement your um, bones and teeth because in diabetes case, 
their nutrients are able to get into their cell. So they do need supplement with many, many of these uh, nutrients. So tinker contain about 18 types of animal amino acid, including eight essential amino acids that cannot be produced by our human body. So what's the benefits of this amino acid? One is ensure that our cell production is continuous because if you once stop the cell production, production means that your cell unable to produce a new cell, then eventually you will die because you might understand that our cell is keep on producing the new cell so that our life can go on. If one day your cell unable to produce or stop produce, your wound will probably stop killing, all right? Your nail unable to grow, your hair will keep on falling and then unable to grow back, all right? This is so-called continuity of the cell production. Secondly, is help the cell to regenerate. We do need help the cell to regenerate so that our damaged system can be repaired or our red blood cell can be uh, changed to a new batches. Our white blood cell can be changed to a new uh, batch so that we won't suffering from this disease, so-called leukemia, if you are too much of this white blood cell. Number three, improve the production function. Improve production function could be including the hormones. Hormone, we do need to produce our hormone. Produce our muscle cell, all right? Muscle cell so that it can improve our movement function, all right? Our uh, mobility, mobility function, as well as our uh, brain function, all right? It's all included in this improved production of function. Number four, increase this metabolism. We all do need to know that if one, if one person wants to uh, stay healthy all the time, they need to get all the toxic things removed from our body and then keep ourselves uh, active. So this is so-called metabolism. So when one person can increase the metabolism, means that chances of uh, burning your fat, all right, burning your fat, or chances of prevent from getting this obesity is also greater if your metabolism is higher compared to those who are slower. Number five is neutralize those harmful substances and then eventually excrete them out of our body. We do need to excrete all these harmful substances like some bacteria, some toxic things, or some med heavy metals, all right, for those who are working in the factory, all right, or they are need to in contact with the chemical substance. We do need to neutralize these harmful substances and eventually excrete them out of our body to remain the healthiness of our body. So in this um, so-called uh, uh, chinker, I do mention that we do have these 18 of types of uh, fruit and vegetable, right? So they do have 18, but because the picture is too blurred, so that I classify them into different groups of uh, food categories. So including have five groups and then each of them have the color to represent themselves. So this color is actually based on the rainbow recipe. Rainbow recipe could be uh, one of the, um, how to say, innovative diets intake nowadays so that we eat all the colors of fruits to take all the vitamins and nutrients from them. So for green color, we, it do means that it can help you to prevent the hardening or so-called atherosclerosis, the hardening of your artery, all right, for green color. So in this product, the green color food will be uh, getting or obtained from broccoli, kiwi, seaweed, as well as kale. Kale is uh, normally in Asian or typical Chinese, we don't actually much eat this kind of veggie, but we do uh, often see it in some Western restaurant, especially those they will put in their salads, or some will maybe that will mix in their sandwich as well. All right, now we come to red. Red color is actually enhance our um, satiety so that we have the mood to eat more nutrients. It also boosts the immunity. So for red color, uh, this product is actually coming from this red pepper, tomato, apple, as well as strawberry for red color, all right, is to enhance your satiety towards uh, eating as well as to boost your immunity. Also, if one day you feel that you don't have any um, mood or any uh, appetite to eat fruits, maybe you can try to eat some red color food. All right, now we come to purple or black, blackish. All right, blackish or purplish things are actually to prevent 
the cardiovascular disease to prevent the viscosity, so called the uh, uh, how to say uh, the um, blood don't make the blood too thickening, all right, to make the blood thinning, all right. So this is the blood and black and purple food they provide the function. So in this product, the purple and black fruit we are actually obtained from mushroom, mulberry, as well as eggplant. Uh, by the way, mulberry is actually good for our eye vision as well. It can improve the blood circulation in our eye side. For white color, white color is actually for uh, detoxification, also can known as to keep your blood or keep your blood vessel clean, all right? Because white color fruit normally is actually high in fiber as well as potassium. So they can significantly reduce our blood uh, pressure level. So white color fruit from this product, chinker, is actually obtained from banana. Banana, I do means that the uh, meat or the flesh of the banana and not the skin. Of course, the skin is yellow color, but the flesh will be white color. All right, cauliflower, white color, as well as potato. All right, this is all give us the white color uh, energy or white color vitamins. Now, last one is the yellowish orange. All right, yellowish orange is a uh, significant or effective in uh, prevent cancer or you want to like, um, when you're having cancer, you want to deal with this uh, cancer cell. Yellow and orange fiber or yellow or orange fruit is good for this. So for this product, the yellow orange fruit is actually come from this honeydew, mango, corn, as well as lemon. All right. So the eight main function overall for this uh, chinker, it can use for weight loss because it slows down the digestion uh, process. So one will not feel hungry easily. So they help him or she control the feeling to crave for something, especially some snack during the tea time, which is not so good. All right. Second thing, control the sugar intake because of the fruit is very slow digest as well as this chinker is very high in this soluble fiber so that it can stabilize our blood sugar so that it can prevent any spike or any uh, fatulation after some diets. Improve the GI system discomfort because it's high in fiber so that it can help the bowel movement. So eventually it can improve the GI system problem. For example, a diarrhea problem, constipation problem, bloating problem. All right. Number four is detox because it's helped in the bowel movement. So eventually it can help the detox. Improve the sipping quality, all right. Improve the sipping quality could be beneficial from this uh, vitamin D complex, all right. This this uh, chinker is high in D complex, so it can improve the sipping quality. Improve the liver function, all right, because uh, chinker, like I mentioned just now, is high in this uh, contains 81 of this uh, function as well as uh, eight types of essential amino acids, so it can enhance the functioning of each organ, include this liver function. And then the second last will be the boost immunity. Boost immunity in diabetes is very important, like I mentioned, because they're easily getting infection from uh, bacteria or virus because their wound healing process is very slow compared to a normal person. So boosting the immunity can help their body to fight the bacteria or toxin when they get infected. And last one is to prevent cardiovascular disease. Prevent cardiovascular disease can be prevent other prob uh, eventually problems like uh, stroke as well as heart attack. So this stroke and heart attack is actually the main killer, con considered the main killer amongst Malaysians every year. So what I mentioned just now, it's just the first column, sub first sub-column under healthy diet. Second thing will be add, eat less refined Foods and sugar, as well as sugar, I would mean like simple sugar or white sugar, all right, or brown sugar, regardless, all right. And then try to choose the whole grain food instead of this refined food. Refined food can be example. One of the example will be these uh, bakeries, good like the um, cakes, cakes or the breads, breads. Where I do means those bread like inside will all full with creams, all right, as well as some crackle that with the with inside contain all right this all is considered refined food as well as well as all these uh, uh, processed food all right so in sugar consumption actually 
we are, do recommend that the recommended adult daily limit is six teaspoon for women and nine teaspoon for men if we are classified in gender. If we are differentiate them into age, classify them into age for children who are less than two years old, we are generally don't recommend that you give any sugar to them is because their pancreas, their body is not fully developed so that the way they need to metabolize the sugar is also take some time so that we might uh, create a burden to their body as well as we do want the children to addict it to the sugar because once the children taste the sugar they know how nice or how sweet the sugar they will eventually do want others food so children we are always uh, recommend do not give them any sugar if they are below two years old so that it, they won't how to say uh, resist for having the breast human breast milk we might all understand that Milk is always uh, tasteless, I would say. So once they try the sugar, they will refuse or reluctance again to drink the uh, human breast milk. All right. For children who is 2 to 18 years old, we are generally recommend less than 6 teaspoons. All right. For adult women, which is 18 and above, and for adult men, 18 and above, which is less than 6 teaspoons as well, and for men, it's less than 9 teaspoons teaspoon respectively. All right. So just just to interrupt you, can yeah. I? Yeah. Yes. Uh, like like how you mentioned six teaspoon a day, I, yeah. I find it a bit a bit impossible because you see, if we drink all those uh, soft uh, drinks, yeah, soft drinks so, is about nine spoon. Yes. So I do means that actually this is the additional add on. All right, additional add ons to our coffee or tea. Uh, JR, your answer is very close. It's actually formulation is very uh, difficult. So I would like you guys to guess actually how many teaspoons is actually Malaysian consume average daily about our sugar consumption. Can you guys make a guess how many teaspoons? Just simply make a guess. I will, I will say about 20. All right. Uh, others? Oh, sorry. Others? Can I see any uh, number? 30, 30, 30. 30, all right. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, type it out, maybe. You know, like those uh, bobo tea that they have? Yeah. One uh, bobo tea is about 22 spoon of sugar already. Yes. So actually, Malaysian, we are having 26 of teaspoons average. Average means that wow. some is high, some is low. So when we're making an uh, average, it's actually we are consuming 26 of teaspoon a day. So like you wow. mentioned, in a uh, cup of soft, uh, so-called what? Soft drinks, like I do mention any brand so that I wouldn't create any uh, discrepancies. Yeah, I understand. So, right, uh, they actually contain about 9 teaspoons in just a tiny uh, regular soft uh, drinks, a can of soft drinks, all right? So that's why why uh, now today, more and more of them is actually coming out with these artificial soft drinks, also uh, non-sugar added soft drinks, all right? Yep. It's 26 teaspoons. It's very uh, wow, huge very now. High. Very, very high. Yes. So the last two points will be try to consume or take omega-3 6 and omega 7 into your daily consumption and then consume the carbohydrates. The carbohydrate I do means that like your noodles, your rice, your mi, your mi hoon or any things that make of flour as well as uh, tubers like potatoes and uh, sweet potatoes. All right. Try to, you can eat but try to in a moderate moderation. All right. Okay, why would I recommend a person who take this omega? Is because, all right, in research, we do prove that if you consume this uh, omega-7, it actually can improve your insulin uh, sensitivity and then improve your blood sugar profile. So in Exxon 1, we do have a product that's very famous and very high and also contain all the types of omega, which is known as mana, all right, mana. It contains the sea buckthorn seed oil, all right, uh, some OPC, nucleic acid, as well as flavonoid and the uh, uh, phospholipid. 
So study has proved that if you take some C button seed oil that is high in omega-7, it can help you improving your blood sugar profile, like I shared with you guys in the previous uh, presentation. It can improve the insulin resistance, like prevent the lower coaster of your blood sugar. All right. The C button seed oil also helps to minimize the blood sugar spike after a carb rich meal. And then because frequently and long term spike in your blood sugar can increase the risk of this uh, type 2 diabetes. So preventing them can eventually help you to reduce your risk. So I just finished my first point. Now we come to the prevention and management of diabetes in the second point. Try to do some exercise. Studies have shown that if you are doing a regular exercise, it can help you to reduce or lower your blood sugar level and control your body weight. The ideal amount of exercise is at least at least 150 minutes per week. So it takes about average 20 to 30 minutes per day. It depends on if you want to conduct every day. So probably you can do about 20 minutes every day. If you want to do it five days a week, say that you want two weeks for a rest day, so maybe you need to do 30 minutes per day if you're trying to have five day basics. So what are the recommended uh, exercise? I do recommend for aerobic exercise, such as jogging. However, if you are obese in size at this moment, then I would not recommend jogging because jogging will causing the injury to your knee. It's also not so good for your knee. I would recommend you go for swimming, all right, swimming. Because of this uh, buoyancy force, all right, the buoyancy force of the water, it can reduce the tension that damage or hurting your knee. All right, as well as you can do some cycling, all right, cycling also can. Try to burn more fat, all right, also increase your body metabolism. Third, control your body weight as well as your waist circumference. You can always ensure that you're having a balanced intake of nutrients, all right, and control your calories intake. Control your calories intake whereby try to have or maybe reduce your snack time. As actually, if your uh, main meal is you are controlling very well, maybe it's just that you're having some uh, craving during the snack time, then try to crave some good snack food. For example, if you want, you can consider our chinko. Chinko is a very good snack, uh, low in calories, high in fiber, and then give you a feeling of fullness. All right. Second is keep your waist and your weight and waist circumference within the normal range. The BMI as well as your waist circumference, like I mentioned just now, keep your BMI try possible less than 25. For waist circumference for women, less than 32 inches. For men, less than 36 inches respectively. Okay, a healthy weight loss we do need to ensure that five daily essential nutrients is consumed. Even though we want to lose weight, to lose weight doesn't mean that I need to skip all my meal or try to not eat at all or just eat two meals per day, all right? Even though my daily routine or usual diet is three meals per day. To lose weight in a healthy manner, we can reduce the portion size but not skipping the meal. Reduce the portion size which means that uh, previously, you're having maybe say two bowls of rice, and then maybe this time you can try to one and a half bowl, and then next time you can try to a one medium bowl size, and then try to eat more veggie rather than those uh, fatty cuts, or you can eat some meat but in those in bean cut and not the fatty cut. If you want to eat frying chicken or frying foods, try to remove the skin uh, because the skin of absorb all the fats, so actually it's very high in calories, all right? Try to include all these five essential nutrients in your daily meal, like your carbohydrates, including the staple food, like your rice is carbohydrates, your meat is your carbohydrates, your noodles is your carbohydrates, all right? Your biscuits also is your hydro, uh, carbohydrates. Biscuits, I don't mean it's the plain biscuit, like the crackers is plain, all right? Protein, protein is like eggs or meats, all right? Taofu also consider protein. Fat, uh, people have a misconception that, oh, I want to do some weight loss, so I should absolute omit it or don't eat any fat. But you do need some, eat some fat. You can eat some good fat rather than some bad fat. Good fat, uh, sea buckthorn, seed oil is a good fat, all right? Uh, 
what else? Um, other like uh, if you want to consume from food, fish, 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 fat, fat from fish is called consider a good fat as well. Avocado, avocado also contains some good uh, fat, healthy fat, fiber, vitamins, and mineral. So these five components need to be consumed in your daily meal, although you want to try to lose weight, but try to lose your weight in a healthy manner. Okay. Now we come to prevention of diabetes. All right. Prevention is mean that if you are having diabetes, try to you want to prevent yourself of having this diabetes, try to prevent this action. First of all, quit smoking. But if your smoke age or you are a heavy smoker, you have been smoked about 20 years. All right. I don't recommend, I do not recommend you to stop immediate from smoking because uh, your body already depend on nicotine for over a long time of period. Suddenly quit from this nicotine will causing a bad influence or a bad uh, complication to your body. Instead, I would recommend you go for bit by bit, slow by slow means that maybe yeah, you smoke about uh, five uh, states of cigarette per day, try to reduce to two, and then, uh, no, try to reduce to three. Maybe next day is two and then one and eventually quit the smoking. Because smoking can worsen our body condition, not just your blood sugar as well as many other problems. We do all know that, all right? The nicotine in the cigarette can stimulate the secretion of the adrenaline glands and then rise the blood sugar. That's why when you smoke, you feel calm very calm and then a bit alert because of the adrenaline gland, they boost this uh, feeling or sensation to you. But when boosting this thing, it will eventually rise your blood sugar. Okay? Okay. Sorry. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, just lagging. All right. Now is besides controlling or prevent or quitting from this uh, cigarette, try to control your alcohol intake. I do mean control and not quit for those who are already light drinking or maybe have a social drinking is fine. It's because the sugar is very, in the alcohol is very fast absorbed and then can be factored fluctuate your blood sugar level significantly because we must understand that um, alcohol is actually fermented by maybe rice all right the beer could be made from this uh wheat wheat things all right from chinese uh wine can be made from this rice from uh the red wine is uh fermented from this grape so all of this is actually uh carbohydrate fruit so they are actually high in uh sugar so I do recommend that every weight, not more than 14 units for men, try not more than two units for women, try not more than one unit. Why men can have the allow, allowance or have the excuses to have more units than men, a woman is because our body biologically can metabolize the sugar faster or, or the alcohol faster than a woman. So men is allowed to have one unit more than woman, but not more than maybe say two units, all right, if we really follow the recommendation. So one unit is equivalent to about 350 ml of beers, uh, regardless you are normal beer, all right, or you are some, um, uh, the what, the, the wheat beer, all right, all kind of beer is just one can, 350 ml, all right. If you are wine, red wine, 150 ml is one unit. If you are like, say, a distilled wine, or like say um, so, so called some uh, whiskey, all right, those some very short or uh, very uh, dense one, all right, there will be only 45 ml in order to consider one unit. Okay, now we do have a real life testimonial, all right, for this diabetic case. I do sharing that uh, diabetic food is considered very severe already, and then this testimonial, this uh, member, having a very severe diabetic food, you can look at his result, is uh, already all the toes gone already, and then the wound is trying to spread to the other parts of our body, means that it's trying to spread upward. If you don't take good care at this moment, eventually, doctor will try to advise to uh, amputation, go for amputation means cut off the leg. So, 
The result after uh, 36 hours, this whereby he consumed orally as well as uh, apply on the wound. When apply on the wound, we must do sterilizing before you need to keep the wound hygiene first, all right? Before you really apply the uh, sea buck seed oil, you slip it out and then apply on the wound, all right? You slip it out and apply on the wound. So the result after 36 hour, 36 hour, you can see that the wound is actually try getting smaller, all right? The redness is gone already. The swelling also become lesser. It's just in about 36 hours. So after five days, you can see that eventually that all the pink color things is gone already. All right, the means that this is actually promoting the wound healing, whereby this is the uh, effectiveness of our C buckthorn seed oil because the uh, function, the effectiveness is very fast. In just in about five days, they can shoot. he can already feel and see the result by his own eyes. And then it takes about only seven weeks. You can see the healing already fully been covered. The wound has been healed. The duration is about just seven weeks. So you can see it's fully uh, recovery. And then uh, some people will ask, uh, will the toes, uh, toes, uh, toes come back? Uh, unfortunately, it's no, it's no, all right? Because it already been uh, affected, all right? So it can just turn like until this um, final process, I would say final stage, all right? And, but it do prevent the next time of this diabetic foot uh, infection attack so that he need not to worry about the amputation anymore because of this product save him life from this am am amputation. Okay, we do, our company besides this mana and chinke like I uh, shared just now, we do have a complete series of this health supplement or is based on this C buckton well berries. All right, so we classify them into nine healthcare pack packages. All right, from A to M. All right, for diabetes. If you are already suffering from this very severe diabetes, I would recommend you take the package A, all right, because this can conquer in the three highs, three highs included diabetes, hypertension, as well as this cholesterol. So if you're already having a very severe uh, diabetes or you're having a long-term diabetes, as well as other two problems or any one of them, like the um, hypertension as well as the uh, cholesterol problem, I will still recommend you to take this package A because it's much more effectiveness on you other, if you are not a diabetes patient, but you're having, you are suffering from this uh, obese or you're having a high waist circumference, you try to do some weight loss, all right? You can choose our package F, which is the healthy weight loss package, all right? It can promote you to weight loss in a healthy manner, manner whereby you need not to skip all your um, meals, all right? This chinker also can help you control the feeling to crave for the snack, all right, so that you won't control by only your mental so hard and difficult, all right. So for those who are having having this uh, diabetes, but want to prevent them from getting this diabetes, you can take this package A, uh, F to prevent yourself. Other than that, if you want to prevent other disease and you are currently an obese or overweight person, I will still recommend you take this package F because if you are obese or overweight, chances of you or risk of yourself getting other uh, chronic disease also higher than those who are slim and healthy BMI. So if you have any inquiries or you wish to understand more about our products or our concept, all right, you can always go to our company official website in www.action135.com, all right? So if you want to contact us, you will still find our you will still can find our contact number there. All right, we can make some um, contact to you if you have any inquiry about products or how to use it, the direction. All right, or any issue about the package. Uh, what are the symptoms for people who first start taking this uh, our product uh, for diabetes? Uh, you mean, uh, first of all, I need to understand that for this diabetes, is how long already? Like until the... 18 years, years, she is, uh, she, she had uh, her diabetes for 18 years. Well she is on insulin injection every day. Uh, yeah. Is it well controlled? Yeah, it's on medication and also on insulin la, injection. La. Uh, I do mean that it's all the... 
uh, blood test is all under control or is the blood test is not so good, the reading? Like oh, the I, I don't know. I don't know. I just... Uh... All right. So if you are mm. actually well controlled, even though you mm. are on insulin and medication, generally the killing crisis is not so severe, not so severe mm. compared to those who are not so well controlled. Because generally, if a diabetes person is really con taking good care of their blood sugar, they are actually not much different from a normal person. It's just that they are uh, depends on these drugs to control their uh, blood sugar. All right, but mm. if you are not taking a good control probably you're feeling some healing crisis maybe say some uh, skin itchiness because the uh, product try to do some detoxification in your body maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. skin itchiness then, uh. according yeah. to her she has got cramp in the stomach cramp in the stomach all right uh cramp in the stomach it's maybe because uh they, he, she's taking mana or she's taking as well as chinkle? Just mana. Just mana. Or mana right. and uh, ate. Mana and ate, all right. Mm. Uh, because we, I, like I mentioned just now, if ones have a very uh, so-called a bad tummy or a bad intestine, or many toxins actually deposit at the uh, colon there, maybe it's first time we need to do some detoxification first. Like uh, some clients ex experience some, not so-called diarrhea, but when they go for a pool or go for this uh, toilet time, they will notice their, their uh, feces or they, their uh, pool is actually uh, accumulated with some oil, all right? Or actually it's a black in color, all right? So uh, the symptom can be varies from person to person, but eventually mm -hmm. the, the product go into your body, it will tackle okay. the first problem first. Maybe your friends is actually not just suffering from this diabetes, maybe there are too much of toxin that is actually deposit on the body that needs some time to actually get it clean, so-called cleanest, cleanest, all right, to clean mm -hmm. uh, the body first. So she might feel some type of bloating, all right, mm. health symptoms. So if the um, so you are suggesting to add what the chinker? I was suggesting to add the chinker, all right, because chinker is high in this uh, fiber as well as this uh, dark glucan. So it can slow down the digestion, so that the bloating symptom can be significantly reduced. Okay. Mm. Okay. I'll tell her to give this a try. All right, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. And well, well done, Chang Hao. I learned a lot from your session today. Thank you.